In this video I'd like to focus on using the revolve tool and dimensioning more complicated shapes. But the first thing I want to do is show you how to interpret the drawing that you currently see, what we call print reading. You may see some symbols, some marks, or some words that you might not be able to identify. So I want to help you with that. The first thing is this TYP. The TYP stands for typical in industry. Industry says that anything that is typical is things that are easy to identify that are different from each other but don't need to be labeled out separately. So I can see that from arrow to arrow it's talking about the wall thickness of this bottle. So it's saying that it is 0.2 anywhere that it looks the same. And it looks like it's the same all the way around. So I have a consistent thickness of 0.2 for the entire bottle. I also have this one down here that says R for radius, 0.26 TYP. So it says every radius that looks like that is probably 0.26. And I try not to do that, or we try not to do that with ones that are very similar to each other. So this one is 0.26. This one and this one are 0.26, and that's really it. So I've got one, two, three of them, plus the other side of the bottle, but it's going to get revolved, so I really have three. I have another one up here at the top that says 0.06 TYP, and that's for anyone that's a tiny radius. I can see that I have one, two, three, four of them. Two inside the bottle, one where the neck and the bottle meet, and one up here on the lip. Anything else that's then unique gets called out separately. So this one here that goes inside the bottle is a radius of 0.1. These three are fairly easy to identify. Uh, what else do we have? We also have these two over here that have the diameter symbol in front of them. And it's talking about the bottle's diameter and the neck's diameter up here at the top. What else do I have? I've got these tiny little center marks. And these center marks are the center point location for any of these arcs. What do they tell me? It tells me that this outside arc and this inside arc actually share the same center point. If they didn't, then I would have more than one of those marks. And the same thing here. So at each one of these intersections, these arcs all share the same center point. When I have two circles or two arcs or circles that share the same center point, we call them concentric. So these two arcs are concentric with each other. And then this one shows me that I have a center point of this top part, which means that it's split half and half. So it evenly transitions with a tangent from the top down to the bottom. All right, let's see if we can't start throwing this into on shape, knowing how to read this print. First thing I want you to do is get rid of all the arcs, all the radiuses, all the fillets, get rid of all of those. And if you simplify this thing down, it really comes down to two rectangles. I have the bottle and I have the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and start on my front view, and I'm just going to throw on two rectangles. Okay, the first thing I really want to do is I want to go ahead and put on the height dimensions. Those I'm not going to mess with. They just are what they are. However they read is how I'm going to see them. So I've got three inches total in height. So I'll put on a general dimension from top to bottom. And I am putting them over here on the left-hand side on purpose. I'll show you that here in a second. So three inches. And then I've got a bottle height of 2 and 3 eighths, so 2.375. Okay, perfect. So everything that's now vertical, or my lines that, that make up my vertical distances, are all black. So now all I need to do is take care of the bottle's diameter, since it's going to get revolved. So from here to here is 3.5 in diameter but half of that in radius. So it doesn't matter if you can do the math in your head or not. Use on shape not just as a calculator, but to hold original values. So 3.5 divided by 2. Again, I could have mathematically did that in my head of 1.75, but if I ever double click on that later, it'll still say 3.5 divided by 2, so I can remind myself what the original diameter was. Then I'll do the same thing at the top. This one is going to be a diameter of 2.25 and then revolved, so a radius divided by 2. So I end up with 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, awesome. Everything is black and it's finished. Okay, now let's go ahead and deal with that 0.2 typical. So we're going to deal with the thickness of the bottle. So what I'd like to do here is actually trim this away, and that's why I left those dimensions out on the left-hand side. Because if not, when I trimmed them away, I could have lost this dimension here because I would get rid of the line that it was attached to. So I'll say trim, and you're going to have to do it twice, because I have one rectangle and another rectangle laying in the same place. Awesome. So now we have an even profile that we can offset in. 
So I'll go ahead and say offset. I'm going to pick the top, the neck, the top of the bottle, the body of the bottle, and the bottom. I'm going to pull them inside, and I want a dimension of 0.2 typical. So enter, 0.2, enter. Awesome, so I now have a bottle that's even all the way inside. Now I got a whole bunch of fillets to do. Let's go ahead and take care of the large ones and work our way towards the small ones. So let's do the 0.26 first. So fillet, this one and this one, enter, 0.26, enter. Now as long as I'm still holding that radius and I don't drop the tool, then everything from here on out is going to be that same thing. So I want this one and this one to be the same enter and this one and this one to be the same enter now that I want to do a new fillet I have to drop the tool and get again so I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard to drop the tool and now I'm gonna start my fillet all over again so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the top two and that was the point zero six oops enter point zero six enter so now I can go around and hit all the small ones so we said we had four of them one two three and four awesome uh, that's good so it looks like we have everything that we needed now I want to show you a little trick if you really think about this these share the same center point that's what they showed us with these center marks if that truly is true and we have a point two all the way around then it was doing the same thing at the fillets so between these two concentric arcs there must maintain a distance of point two if that's true, and I hit undo, 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 and I go back before I offset it, if I offset it here, fill it, after I put on the fillets, 0.26, do another one here, do the little one here, so escape, escape, fill it, these two, 0.06, then another one here. If I now go ahead and offset and pick everything, yeah, it is a little bit harder because I've got all these little fillets to pick. But now it'll actually do all of them for me, and I don't have so many extra ones to do. So it's now keeping a consistent distance all the way around. So however you're comfortable doing it, it's going to give you the same results. So enter and point to TYP. Hey, awesome. So that gave me the exact same results. So I can either do them manually, just going around doing them by hand, or I can do them ahead of time before I go ahead and do my offset. Okay, so the last thing I really need to do is put this little arc on here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and start my three-point arc. So I can see right now that that tells me, that center mark tells me that it transitions right at the edge of the bottle. So I'm going to click here, somewhere up here, and then bow it in. I'll go ahead and start throwing some dimensions on there. So it tells me that it's a radius of 0.1 and that we have a dimension from here to, uh, actually it's on the outside. So a dimension from the outside of the bottle to here of 0.825. And I already have it, so 0.825. Mine just happened to go ahead and lock into place. If yours didn't and this isn't gray, then you can go ahead and keep that dimension. Regardless, we want it to be black. So I'm gonna hit escape and delete that driven dimension. Okay, so that's it. I have everything already black, just the way it's supposed to be. So I have the constant distance of 0.2 all the way around. I have a bottle that's going to have the correct diameter and correct diameter. And let's see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and finish or accept the sketch. Revolve. If it doesn't pick everything, um, then you can manually pick it. If it does pick everything, then you can just unpick the top and the inside of the bottle. So regardless, sometimes it seems to pick everything and then sometimes it doesn't. Regardless, we can then say an axis that's here and it should give us our full bottle. Awesome. So when you create yours, I need you to make it a unique color. So something other than a default the software comes with before you try to submit it. And remember, down here at the bottom is where your mass properties gets displayed. You click on that, and then you click on your bottle. And as soon as you do, it'll tell you the volume and the surface area. And that will allow us to interpret whether we did the part correctly or not. In the next video, we'll go through part B, the pulley. Um, we've got some more specifications and some more things with print reading that I want to try to tell you and show you how to draw that part. See you then.